Welcome to ECOA Challenge 2020 Award Ceremony. Okay, ready to start here. Okay, we're online and uh, welcome everybody. On behalf of the board and staff of the Merita Foundation, welcome to ECOA 2020 Virtual Challenge and Awards event occurring today, May 28th, broadcast from Ventura, California. Today, we are honoring 27 students who despite all logistical, technical, and temporal odds had the courage, drive, and discipline to put together proposals aimed at reducing the carbon footprint of their school campuses. We also want to acknowledge their teachers, Ms. Erin Mendes from Anacapa Middle School, yeah, Ms. Julia Domenech from Buena High School, Ms. M Marie Chavez from Honata Middle School, and Ms. Teresa Lujan from Channel Islands High School who despite the multiple difficulties of teaching remotely, did a monumental effort to motivate and guide their students. This is quite an event to be able to hold the ACOA challenge during this unprecedented social distancing situation due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Virtual ACOA Challenge 2020 Awards event is happening via Zoom. We ask that only students sign into Zoom and they stay in mute mode until they are asked to present their project or, stay a, or say a few words. This event is also being broadcast live through YouTube. Students, parents, peers, friends, and the general public can see this event at www.youtube.com slash user slash Merito Academy. I'm right now gonna talk about the agenda and the agenda will probably last about 75 minutes or so. And I'm gonna just quickly go over it. The first thing we have a very special speaker, Jean-Michel Cousteau of the Oceans Future Society will be talking to us. Then we're gonna hear from our uh, foundation erect, uh, executive director, Rocio Lozano Knowlton, and she's going to introduce our community partners, uh, our sponsors, Haley Matuasqua and Ventura Water Allison Manos, Clean Water Pal Alliance, excuse me, Clean Power Alliance. From 4.30 to 4.40, the uh, awards for energy reduction tier from 440 to 450, awards for water conservation tier. For 450 to 455, the ACOA Teacher of the Year and video blooper from some of our students. And from 455 to 415, the awards for waste reduction tier. For 515 to 520, awards for ocean acidification outreach tier. And around 520 or so, we'll be doing the closing remarks. The Merita staff, during this, this whole process, the Merito staff will introduce each project and then call in the authors to tell us what their favorite part was of designing these projects and what was the biggest challenge. Now, we are very privileged. This is a very special event that we have and someone that uh, we from the Merito Foundation uh, all admire very much and who has inspired millions of people to protect the ocean. Our keynote speaker, Jean-Michel Cousteau. Hello. Thank you very much, Cliff. And uh, I want to say hi to Marie Paola and Rocio. For me, uh, it's a privilege to be able to speak not only to the crowd that uh, you represent, but to all the young people that are involved. And uh, I'm Jean-Michel Cousteau. I was a kid when my father put a tank on, my ba tank on my back. I became a scuba diver. I will celebrate very soon 75 years of uh, scuba diving. I'm very excited to share everything I know and I've done with uh, as many people as possible. And uh, it is uh, uh, my pleasure to say that uh, you can go on our website and learn and ask us questions nonstop. Our mission at Ocean Futures is very, very simple. If you protect the ocean, you protect yourself. And I want to show uh, a privilege uh, that I have is to uh, show a show which uh, speak to all the people at the uh, ECOA program and uh, give them hope for all kinds of inspiration for the kids. And uh, I've put one show just to hopefully give uh, all the uh, love and care that we all should have 
for protecting what we all depend upon, whether you live near the ocean or away from the ocean. We all connected and depend upon that ocean. Could we have the film, please? We need to ask him if we can hear. Well, I uh, believe it's going to come soon, but I wanted you to see it uh, because I think you will enjoy it. Uh, it's very short. Yeah, we need to be able to host. Um, <laughs> host, where is Jim? I need to, Jim, no? Michelle. Where's well, your hold on, hold on one second. We're so many here. We're new to this technology. <laughs> <laughs> like you can tell. You know, there were two people who were going to go to uh, in space uh, yesterday, and because I'm of the sure. bad weather, the climate change, no, uh, sure. they uh, were staying in Florida, and uh, they will only go on Saturday. So <laughs> we, we're changing a few things, but uh, for me, it's really a privilege to have this chance to uh, address to young people because when I was your age, the young people, we didn't have television, we didn't have a computer, we didn't have a cell phone. Uh, we had a very little, very poor communication. And uh, I will always remember that uh, our telephone, where I grew up in South of France, was 221 backwards. <laughs> That's all I remember. So here's the show. We must connect the ocean to the existence of every human being. This is the only way for people to understand that the quality of each and every one of our lives depend on water, depends on the ocean. My father said, people protect what they love. And so we want more people to fall in love with water, with the ocean. And I say, protect the ocean and you protect yourself. Well, thanks to the ECOA program, uh, it inspires young people and uh, these people will be much, much better decision makers than I was or we were at uh, their age, at the same age as their age, because we didn't have communication in those days. So uh, today we can pass on all of that uh, Hello, knowledge Sia, that we have and uh, I want to make sure that uh, uh, we uh, do everything we can to give you a chance to go over what, what we're doing. See, we made a lot of progress. We've learned a lot about nature, whether it's in the ocean or on land, but we've made a lot of mistakes. And we're finding out whether it's the plastic or the emission of CO2, uh, which goes in space and, and air, which uh, literally, uh, um, reheat the temperature of the ocean, uh, increase the acidification uh, in the ocean, which uh, doesn't allow the coral reefs to do what many species that uh, they normally do. And uh, so the system is we getting weaker. And, you know, every species is playing a very important role. And uh, in our program, Ambassador of the Environment program, we, we explained that uh, every species play a critical role. When you lose a species, you weaken the system and these uh, problem with climate change gets worse and worse today. And we really have to uh, keep in mind that we have a program that we need to make sure is improving and protecting uh, what we have and the huge opportunities. And those opportunities, whether it's the sun, the wind or the currents, whether it's in rivers or in the ocean, we can capture that energy without having to consume oil and uh, 
gas and uh, all the mistakes that we're making today, which we didn't know before. It's not an issue of criticizing or pointing fingers. It's an issue of uh, sitting down with uh, engineers and creators and coming up with new solutions. And I really, really believe we can do it. So I'm uh, very important uh, to share with you everything or some of what we've done. And uh, the greatest challenge, uh, of course, is that famous climate change. And I would like to uh, uh, show you another little story that we put together for this very program today. Climate change is the greatest challenge in human history. Our collective future depends on a healthy environment. We have the solutions of innovative clean energy. We now need the willingness to put them into action. We owe it to ourselves. We owe it to our water planet. Every day is the perfect opportunity to create the sustainable future. We are the only species on the planet that has the opportunity and the privilege not to disappear. Protect the ocean and you protect yourself is critical. And I think it's very important for people to understand that way, way in land, uh, when you're on top of a mountain and you want to go skiing, you're skiing on the ocean. Let's not forget that. So we all connect to the ocean one way or the other. And it's, uh, it's a very, very critical. And uh, we're living today what I call a communication revolution, where every human being on the planet can be connected up to 9 billion people uh, will be uh, connected with all the technology that we have, whether it's a computer, your cell phone, uh, the uh, way of communication that we have, which uh, was not available uh, in the recent past. But uh, thanks to that communication revolution, we can have uh, young people become the leaders and the decision makers and bringing to the attention of our decision makers uh, better decisions. And I believe we are going to head in that direction. Remember, as I said earlier, uh, we're the only species that has the privilege to decide not to disappear. And uh, it's our choice. If we disappear, nature will keep going on. We don't want to disappear. We want to enjoy it. I want my children, my grandchildren, uh, to have the same privilege that I've had when I was uh, their age. And I'm so glad that they are involved. And even my <laughs> grandson, now who is only uh, eight years old, uh, he throws his toys in a pool so he can dive to go and get it. So he's very connected to what we depend upon, uh, which is uh, water, the ocean. Now, the kids are the future decision leaders and the young people, please thank you for your attention. And I want to congratulate uh, the EC Corps. Uh, and uh, I want to uh, very, very much thank you for everything you're doing to uh, look into the climate change, the carbon footprints that uh, we are responsible for. We can change it. There are already efforts being made, particularly in California, but this is only a tiny little percentage of the population of this country. And uh, so we need to uh, continue to pass it on to other people in other parts of the world. Remember, if you protect the ocean, you protect yourself. So thank you very, very much to all of you for what you're doing and what uh, you're learning and what you can do. Remember, we're not criticizing anybody. We want to sit down with whoever can make a difference and convince them everybody has a heart and we can reach them and make a difference. So thank you very, very much.
Okay, well, Jean Michel, thank you so much for your very inspiring words for being today with us. So, you know, we are having trouble with YouTube right now. We exceeded a quota for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> we have it, but we're working on it. We are, this event is being recorded and we will put it in our two YouTube channels. So, if parents of students are trying to see your friends, I apologize. It is our first Zoom event. It was too big. To start with, um, um, it seems like too many people are trying to get in, or I'm not sure, but that, that's, we're working on that. Um, I went. I am Rocio Lozano, as you know, most of you know, students, and um, with me is Mari Paula, and we work together in the Merito Foundation. I want to say thank you, Jan Michel, for your for accepting. It's, it's quite a privilege and honor. I always wanted to have you. I didn't have the uh, uh, strength to ask you to drive to Ventura and present so in a way when we could do it virtual. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe this time we can have Jean Michel. Um, <laughs> I studied oceanography. I got decided to be when I was 11 and, and watching your father's films was inspiring and seeing underwater footage was inspiring to me. And I think, um, having sharing this experience with the students are, are extremely beneficial. So thank you would, for everything you're doing, Rocio. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you're an inspiration. And with people like you, I believe we're gonna make it. Thank you. Wow. Uh, likewise. Um, I am proud of the students. I was talking to one of the teachers today and we're almost crying because they were wonderful. Our practice today went better. So um, I want to also take the opportunity to thank other partners and sponsors for the Medita Foundation and particularly the co-op program. I want to say thank you to Noah Bewed Grant, the program that supports water chain ocean education throughout the nation, especially for California Bewed Grant, program manager C. Baron Akbar and uh, Claire Fackler, the coordinator and all the staff at Channel Island National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, without them, this program, also this foundation wouldn't have ever started. And I wanna say thank you also to Ventura Water. We've been working for three years with them in providing watershed education, messages and water conservation and content and experiences um, uh, to a number of students from Ventura Unified School District. And, and we look forward to keep working together. And we, I wanna say thank you to a new partner we have um, with uh, Clean Power Alliance is our first year. We're very excited about this new collaboration. Uh, Clean Power Alliance, in case you don't know, is uh, the new locally operated electric electricity provider for communities across Los Angeles and Ventura County. Um, and we're gonna have a few words from Haley. If Haley, are you ready? Uh, and then from Allison Manis, who is a program manager, uh, senior manager for Clean Power Alliance. So Haley, are you Hear with me? us? Yes. Yes. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Haley Mexicawa, and I am an environmental specialist with the city of Ventura, Ventura Water. And like Rocio mentioned, uh, Ventura Water has had the pleasure of partnering with the Merido Foundation for over three years now. We partner to provide meaningful watershed experiences for our students in the city of Ventura. So typically this time of the year, we actually host 500 students at our wastewater treatment plant to learn how Ventura treats and cleans its wastewater before it gets released out into the environment. And as you guys know, this year has been a little bit different and we do miss our students greatly. Um, Having you guys at our plant is one of the highlights of my year. And so uh, this year we did put together a virtual tour of our wastewater treatment plant. So although you guys aren't able to visit us, I do hope that you will view our YouTube video and get a chance to enjoy and learn a little bit about wastewater treatment from the safety of your home. So we're gonna be sharing that link today and you guys can check out our wastewater treatment plant on YouTube. I would like to commend all of you guys who have adapted and persevered during these challenging times. I personally would like to express my gratitude to all the students who have committed to improving water conservation at your homes and at your schools. I'm one of the judges for the water conservation program and I love to get this project. Your efforts will help us as a city protect our precious local water resources. 
So please know that you are making a big difference. And I hope that you will take the lessons you have learned in this program and share them with your friends and your families moving forward. So congratulations to all the students for completing your COA project. You should be very proud of the work that you have completed. And Ventura Water is very proud to be a sponsor for the Water Conservation Project winners. So thank you guys for having me today. Thank you, Haley. And um, I think we have with us uh, Allison. Yes. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you all virtually today. Um, I'm Allison Manis with Clean Power Alliance. I'm the senior marketing manager, and I also focus on customer engagement. Um, we are proud to be partnering with Merito Foundation um, as one of our community-based organization outreach grants and um, I just wanted to give a little bit of background on Clean Power Alliance. I know I did notice one of the students cheering when when our name was announced so some of you may be familiar with us. Last year uh, we enrolled most Ventura County cities um, within Clean Power Alliance and so you you are likely one of our customers or your parents are at least. Um, we are proud to be focused on getting clean energy and, and also that Ventura County cities just just to make note, um, many of them have chosen 100% green power default here, which means 100% renewable energy. Um, so that, that is a big focus for us and how to make sure that communities are safer during wildfires with cleaner um, options like battery storage um, and just really working together with our community partners and cities and counties to reduce the effects of climate change through electricity and clean energy programs. Uh, right now, we're very focused on making sure that our customers have been um, receiving some financial protections during during the COVID um, during this time of COVID-19. Um, we have offered um, bill credits to our residential customers who are enrolled in financial assistance programs um, or bill payment plans if they're already enrolled in those programs, as well as our small business customers who sign up for bill payment plans. Um, so I will be happy to share the information in case any of your families or neighbors would like the information about how to get bill credits or get the financial assistance. Um, and that's been a really big focus for, for us to make sure that we're reaching our multicultural communities, um, you know, in a way that, that is linguistically and culturally competent. Um, we're also excited to be working on customer programs um, to help our customers take advantage of uh, technologies like smart thermostats um, and other, other great technologies that are going to help us reduce our carbon footprint. And so I just want to thank all of you for, for your work um, in really advancing the next generation of leadership in, in environmental um, activism. You, you all are an inspiration to us um, just to see how engaged you are and that you're finding creative ways to still do your work even though you're quarantined and you can't even go to your schools or to the Merido offices is, is an inspiration to all of us um, and how to persevere and, and just stay inspired during this time. So I wanna thank you, congratulations on your ECHO projects and um, keep moving the ball forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alison, those are wonderful words. Very, very, really looking forward to work together. And we're starting a project on environmental literacy, so you know, with CAPS Media, where we'll be delivering and working with students on messages to educate the public about the interaction of the ocean, the atmosphere, and how energy uh, literacy is very important uh, in all aspects um, in, in Earth systems. So just throwing out there a quick ad. But um, I'm going to move forward now with. Uh, um, just uh, for those who are not familiar with the program, um, as this this is being recorded, I want to say a, a quick shout out to Mari Paula. I want to introduce her. Um, yeah, we're um, like family, very close to <laughs> here in this office. We um, work all the time together, and I like her to say a few words. Um, hello, everybody. I'm so proud of our students and teachers. Uh, I almost can't believe that they actually did this. Uh, I'm really, really proud of what you accomplished. And thank you to our sponsors and Jean Michel and everybody that has supported us through this time. Um, yeah. 
Cool. Okay, so ECOA stands for Energy Efficiency to Mitigate Climate Change and Ocean Acidification. And we are a program that runs throughout the school year. Uh, we uh, work through the teachers. It's really them, the champions who go in the classroom and teach the concepts we're hoping they bring to them. We give curriculum, professional development, and then we also take the kids out in the field most of the time. Sometimes we can't, like now but um and then the students the end of the pro program is when they put together all these concepts they've learned about ocean science climate science and energy literacy put them together to resolve problems and they start with the school campus because of COVID-19 we didn't get as many uh, uh, entries of projects uh, many some of the teachers usually we have eight to ten teachers per year we're not able to conduct what we call a uh, school campus assessments of energy water waste uh, those who did are many of the ones that were able to enter this challenge this this year um, and despite the difficulties of teaching distantly teachers are still encouraging and and uh, mentoring them to do the projects and working with us through tutorials. So uh, that's in a nutshell what the core program is about. Uh, it's mainly sponsored by Noah Bewet. And yes, and we can, um, we had about uh, five adults per project review each project. And we have guidelines in the scoring a rubric and only those who uh, qualify to have over 75% um, of scores, give or take, we're uh, eligible to re receive cash prices. One project will be selected also later to be implemented. We already sponsored, for instance, this year, for last year, uh, LED lights for the uh, parking lot of uh, Jonathan Middle School in Bulton. And we just recently sent a check and that's been implemented as one of the examples. So not only students are receiving cash prizes, it's not about the prizes, but the glory of finding solutions on how do we reduce the waste or the water usage or electricity. They understand that all of those things com uh, com combine, contribute to greenhouse gases and warming our atmosphere, oceans, and uh, creating a more acid marine environment that affects many organisms uh, in the food web. So with this, I want to introduce the project. So da -da 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 -da, we're going to get started. So we uh, see some of the slides and examples of what the student, the teachers go through with us. Um, um, big shout out for our teachers. And for, we're going to get started with the energy uh, efficiency tier. And for that, we have only one project qualified to win a cash prize, but it, it got 101%, not just 100%. Uh, the winner of this prize is going to receive $300 check in the mail and it's Antonio Fami who is the author of Social Distance from Wasting Energy, the title of his project. And uh, he's a student from Anacapa Middle School. His teacher is Mrs. Erin Mendez. And Antonio's energy uh, project was uh, really, really good. And uh, I learned <laughs> a lot. And Maripala is gonna show us a little bit about it um, in a, this uh, short description. And then I'm gonna give, ask um, Antonio to um, unmute so that um, talk to me after she talks, describes your project on what were the most challenging or fun aspects of this project to do it, okay? Right, so Antonio's project proposed to install smart power strips to save energy from idle computers and accessories. These are the power strips um, that he um, is proposing to install and um, he calculated that just installing 220 power strips at the school would save 2,900 kilowatt, kilowatt hour and $436 every month. And not only that, but in two years, uh, the power strips will be paid off and the school would have, sa would have saved one month and two thirds, uh, so two, one and two thirds of a month in electricity just by changing uh, these uh, accessories. And um, he will spread awareness about his project and gain support for it as soon as he gets back to school in the fall. Okay, we are gonna, 
I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pass it to Rocio and Antonio who are gonna. So Antonio, um, if you can show us your, your cute face, we'd love to see you and tell us what was the most challenging uh, aspect of developing or designing this project? What was your most fun thing? And, and why do you think it should be implemented? Um, okay. The most challenging part of my project was finding the idea, as you know, it's kind of hard to find good ways to save electricity since we were trying our best. Like last year, our team from our school won and got light sensors implemented, which is a good thing and it's saving our school a lot of money. So I was thinking, what would I do? And I thought about computers and that's where the fun started to start because once I researched about the subject, I got to learn more about how I could save electricity at my house. I learned a lot of vocabulary words about energy, like kilowatt hours and watts mm -hmm. and stuff. And yeah, like finding the idea was like a treasure hunt. And <laughs> once I found it, like it was like that eureka, I got really happy. And I was like, I should do my project on this. And I think it should be implemented because like you, like I said in my slides, uh, at schools, not the, uh, the computers aren't being used 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Most of the time they're left on the control alt delete screen waiting for someone to log in and they're like that, it's just a sponge, it's sponging energy in and it's wasting a lot. And I thought, how could I reduce that? And once I found that these power strips could mitigate or remove them completely, I decided to do my project on them. Very good. Well, you did an excellent job. So congratulations. Thank you. And now we're going to present um, in the category of water quality, uh, water conservation in the school campus. And for that, we had more projects entered and we have a third, second and first uh, prize winners. Third prize winners in water conservation category is a project titled Water Conservation. Same name. And is uh, authored by Carla Cardona and Priscilla Manso. And they are students of Buena High School of uh, Mrs. Julia Dominic. And they have won $350. Uh, and their project is about uh, so the students proposed to install, they proposed two methods. So they proposed to install rain barrels around the campus to collect rainwater. And they also proposed to install simple, simple aerators on the um, restroom sinks, also to save water by lowering the, the amount of water that comes out of them. So um, do we have Carla? Or Priscilla, guess any of you would like to uh, tell us uh, one of you what was or take turns? What was the most challenging part of designing the project? What was your favorite part of designing the project, and why you think it should be implemented at your school campus? Um, well, I think that like we liked the best part that we liked about doing this project is that because we got to research more information about ways to save water and also a great way to save water in our school campus. And I think the challenging part about this project was deciding where the, the water tanks would be placed in, around the school. And I think um, like it would become a reality. It would be like if it was installed in our school, it would be a great way to recycle water that was wasted and um, that and it could be saved for something like watering plants or something. Perfect. Thank you. Very good idea. Uh, all very good ideas and uh, I love that the fact that we're seeing over the last this program is in its fifth year and we're seeing projects happen. Uh, some of them we've been able to the first couple of years we couldn't like there was 
students came with these wonderful ideas and then there were just ideas and it was becoming very frustrating. It was until a couple of years ago. And now we see a lot of changes in the school campuses. So you guys are activists. This, this is a, a, a bottom to up change in the way. So once things change, then it becomes habits. So for second prize winners in this tier, water conservation, we have a title, a project title, Slow the Flow. Uh, and this was authored by Colin, um, I'm not sure if I'll pronounce your last name correctly, I'm so sorry, Chrysostomo. Um, and he is also from Buena High School, a student from uh, Mrs. Julia Dominic. And he has won $350. Oh, sorry, he's won, I think so. Um, yeah. Second prize, yes, also, yes. And Maripada is going to tell us what the project is about. Right, um, so Colin with his project Slow the Flow proposes to change the urinals that are currently installed in the boys' bathrooms at Buena High School or men's bathrooms. And, uh, he found these urinals that use less than a fifth of the water, water efficient, and he calculates that the school would save 87% compared to the urinals that are currently installed. And that would make a pretty big difference when it comes to money as well. It would uh, be from a thousand dollars a month to, uh, just for the urinals, mm -hmm. urinals to one hundred and twenty-five dollars a month. And he plans to create a video campaign to get support for his project uh, from the school district and even the city. So we would love to hear from the any one of the authors. Um, same thing, what would be the, what was the most challenging part of designing this project? What was the most interesting or fun or what did you like the most? And I love your uh, blooper, by the way, we're going to show it. And also, uh, why you think it should be implemented at your school campus? Uh, I think the most interesting part was learning more, like just about the water usage in my school and just learning more about that because I did not know that they used that much water. And what were the other questions? What was the most difficult thing? Uh, the most difficult thing? Mm. Hmm. I'm going to chime in here. I okay. think, <laughs> uh, you know, Colin decided to go at this alone and, yeah. you know, it was yeah, really hard to, challenging yeah, to work. I mean, this was his idea and he did it, you know, by himself. So I'm just really proud of him to, that he, you know, followed through and had the drive to do this uh, on his own. Good for you, Colin. And you look Thanks. really handsome too. Thank you. <laughs> you are very handsome. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to first prize winner of water conservation tier. And it's a title that I love. It's called Water Rights of Jennifer Ohide. And I and again I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing last names correctly. And she's a student from Anacapa Middle School and uh, a student of Miss Mrs. Mendes. And her project is about All right, this project, Water Rights. I also really like that name because I think it is a right. Okay, great. So, um, can we hear from Jennifer? Are you here, Jennifer? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was on mute. Okay. Yep. 
Um, what I liked about doing the project was like, you, I learned a lot from... <laughs> Jennifer, maybe your camera is uh, off too? There you go. No. <laughs> so, I <got laughs> What I liked do, uh, about the project was that it was a good opportunity for me to learn about how much water we conserve and waste like year long. I mean, I really enjoyed doing the project a lot. Great. Do you think it should be implemented in your school and why? Um, yeah, <laughs> um, because it's really good for our environment for using the project idea. And we won't be able, like, we won't be wasting any water at all. That's true. Well, or at least less. Yes. So, you know, for uh, viewers who are not involved, what the students went through is what's called waste a water assessment in this case. And schools throughout the nation utilize a humongous amount of, of, of water and also electricity, if, unless those newer buildings that have solar panels. The electric bill, for instance, or a high school in Ventura or Oxnard runs between $12,000 to $28,000 a month. And that's a lot of kilowatts hour. So um, all of these, and, and say with the water, water is not as expensive in value, but the cubic feet are humongous. There are a lot of big numbers. So with that, I want to take a quick break. And I'd like to uh, uh, introduce now something we started, um, I think, two years ago. Ago, uh, two years ago, and is to recognize the teacher, the ECOA teacher of the year. Uh, as I mentioned, these teachers, like you see them, we just saw Julia, they're doing be what more, far more than what they're supposed to do for work. And as a parent of, ch of, of children who have been going, high school students now, I know um, when, as a parent, when the teachers go through a lot more trouble to help their students and these are exemplary teachers they all are uh, for wanting to teaching them more than the minimum required and to take them outside and to involve them in projects and to hold their hands and to inspire them um, and there's one that it pops out of the others every year so this year we'd like to give that recognition to teacher mrs erin mendez of anacapa middle school yeah because she is I've uh, been fantastic and, and all of you, all teachers, it's hard to choose one because of the social distancing and doing remotely and going through all these difficulties, technological difficulties like what I've been going through today. For that, I will say thank you, Erin. Guys, if you have your audio, Anacapa is clap for Erin Mendez. Uh, she's been outstanding and... Um, Yay! <laughs> And we know you love uh, sea glass jewelry, so expect a small gift from, from the Merito Foundation board and staff and sponsors on the mail as well. And uh, these teachers went through going on a boat and doing plankton toes and looking for sand crabs and being in a classroom with us and teaching the curriculum and helping with the projects and 850 emails back and forth, right? And text messages today. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, Erin. Uh, I'm just so proud of all these kids. They they got started on the project before the sh uh, COVID shut down, and they pulled through and got it done. And I am just super proud of them. I can't, I'm about to cry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I we were gonna are we gonna do this or not? Um, I'm very glad we did. Thank I'm you. so sorry we. YouTube did not let us because there's too many, there were too many people. So we're going to keep trying, trying to log in. We exceeded, I, we didn't know we had a quota on how many people could view our, our YouTube channel. We've never reached a quota. So, so as uh, some things we learned today. Um, but so what we would like to also take a quick break. I don't know if you can hear me and help us with a, a few, um, uh, students made some videos with their PowerPoints. Uh, we didn't have the time to go to the long videos, but do they have, uh, uh, what do you call them, bloopers? Um, funny short videos of them while they were doing the videos for the project. So we'd like to show those. If, if, if Jim is ready. Yes. Great. Thank you.
Okay, and by the way, Jim is my husband, Jim Knowlton, famous Jim Knowlton, is, works with Jean-Michel Cousteau and many other people, and he's an underwater amazing photographer, videographer, editor, and puts up with me as well. So, <laughs> so and he's on the, in Santa Barbara uh, trying to play the, the bloopers. Once we see the bloopers, we're gonna go into uh, the uh, category of waste reduction. And we had a lot of entries for that. It was a very popular tier. Everybody, and we have another program called the Blue Green Schools for Elementary Level Students. And same, all the schools chose waste reduction. The, this year was the waste reduction year for some reason. And um, maybe the fact that not much has been recycled throughout the country. Um, so we, uh, that's, that's probably the truth. Uh, we had seven projects. Um, that uh, we couldn't choose, so we're gonna give, give awards to four, and then there's three honorary projects. So um, I'm gonna give some time to difficult technology problems with the videos. So let's go into, oh, okay, we're here. We can watch them now. And why we, how and why we implemented a call. we put waste and <laughs> With our class, to, to implement it at our school. Then went around to mm -mm. <laughs> Little Einstein. Each roll costs. Is is that? Oh shoot! A wasp. Move. Hey, where's the nearest flower patch? <laughs> Should do it again. Should do it again. Uh, yeah, probably. In a brief. Uh, in a brief non-verb, in a brief non... Whatever, just look at our pictures. We chose the HK1800PA hand dryer because it is affordable, of decent quality, and the installation is simple. Amelia. Oh, uh, I hope you liked our video. What? <laughs> well, my what? <laughs> and costs for... I got so far. Yeah. <laughs> this graph for ah dogs. Welcome to slow the flow. My water. <laughs> you said have personality. You did okay. Sorry, these are some of the bloopers from our um, our students. Uh, there were a few more, but for now. This is uh, what we can show so we can stay on track. And we might end a little earlier, to be honest. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is call in uh, and describe the winners in the waste reduction. And we're gonna start with the honorary teams. And I would like to uh, first uh, give a shout out to the teachers again for their help as these uh, waste uh, audits are, are a bit complicated and messy. Help, thanks for helping your students. Um, the first team we're gonna call in is a more plastic, more money, more better. That's the project's name. And the team is called uh, Plastic Patrol. And it's authored by Jackson Hernblad, Matthew Wolf, and Merrick Wisner, or Weisner, one of those. These are students from Jonathan Middle School in Buellton, and their teacher is Mrs. Marie Chavis. And their project is about? So Plastic Patrol actually had um, a project they actually implemented. They placed 13 bins around their campus, and they strategically placed them in places where they could collect plastic bottles to be sold later. And the funds will be used for science supplies and science um, experiments and things like that. And um, they actually evaluated that the project was being successful because they saw a decrease of 70% um, of the water bottles that were found in the trash and this recycling. So in six months, they were able to reduce the amount of plastic going into the landfills potentially, but even going into the recycling and they were actually taking advantage of that and making some money for the school. And they have an Instagram account you should check out. It's gonna be at 
plastic, plastic patrol or the plastic patrol. It's, it's gonna be that one. Okay, so do we have uh, Jackson or Matthew or Merrick? Would any of you like, how about which one answers to one question? What was the most challenging part of your project? Can I unmute yourself? The most challenging part was probably uh, being able to keep up with collecting all of the plastic from each classroom and keeping everything clean. And nice. to add on to that, in the future, we could actually have um, collecting plastic go to service hours for students to get enough to graduate. Oh, wow. It was a wonderful project. There were just so many in, in this tier. Um, how about the most fun part? What was that you liked the most? The best part of this project was knowing that we made a difference and that we actually started to see instant results. And you are implementing this project already at Jonathan, or Jonathan Middle School, right? Yes. Yes, that's amazing. Yes, um, and um, so there's no, I can't ask why not implement it. It's already been implemented. I want to do a shout out for, for Marie Chavez uh, for several projects from the Aqua Challenge are being implemented at that school. And I think she is, she was last year's teacher of the year. And it has a lot to do with her and believing her students and bringing that opinion to their administrators, but also her administrators. I think, I don't know them, but I think they're great. You want to say anything, Marie? Um, only that I have over the last three years really, 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 really enjoyed the process of getting the kids to become advocates for the environment and seeing their growth and what they creatively can come up with as problem solving individuals. So I thank ECOA for being able to provide that for the students, um, for them to be able to actually see that they can make a difference um, is huge. No, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. You have a great teacher, guys. Really, all of you. Okay, so um, we, we will award for all honorary, honorary uh, teams also. We wanna spread the love and you'll be receiving, I, we have asked for your addresses and you'll be receiving within the next 10 days checks, each one of you. And I will, that's just a small token of gratitude from us and from our communities and sponsors and partners. Okay, for the next project, we have another honorary project and this one is called Litter Lighting. And it was authored by Sierra Ruiz, Sidney Guzman and Ke Carolina Hernandez of Buena High School. Their teacher is Mrs. Julia Dominic, and the project is about? All right, so uh, the litter lining team proposed actually two methods to reduce. The litter lighting uh, team actually proposed two different methods to reduce waste at Buena High School. The first one was to install water filling stations at the school to do, cut down on water bottles being used by the students. And the second one was a really elegant, really simple method of color coding the trash cans at the schools. And they researched that they estimate that at least 10% of the waste um, can be decreased or put in the right bins if it's color coded. Right. So, do you have anybody from that team? Do we have uh, Sierra or Sydney? Yes. Perfect. So, tell us what was the most challenging thing? What was the best thing, and why would it be should it be implemented? The most challenging part about this project was finding the right methods to use that would stand out in like in all of the projects we wanted methods that were going to stand out like color coordination and how that affects the memory mm -hmm. and what i liked most about the project was learning about how color actually improves the memory and will draw your attention to the bins 
And I think it's important that our plan gets implemented in the future. So, <laughs> so that the waste at Buena will be reduced. And what was, um, so you answered, all, so how many students are in your school? Do you know? It was about, where? Like 2,000 or 1,700? About 1,809, I okay. believe. Oh, wow, okay. 1,890, around there. Students, wow, so that is, um, potentially a lot of, of, of waste that's going to the landfills. Well, good job. Any other one of your team's members who want to speak? Anybody? Yeah, it will be me. All right. Um, what, I like, um, what I liked the most about doing this project was, um, I was we were trying to figure out solutions to reduce waste at Buena High School. And what was the, what I think was the most challenging about this project was um, trying to get everyone available to do the project at this time of the COVID-19. And what I think, what I, what I think was, shoot, hold on, let me speak. Um, all right, what I think is, what I think it's important to our plan to get implemented to our um, school is to reduce waste, of course. And if it's, if it's implemented in Burn High School, we, our other schools around the world will be able to reduce waste as well. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, with that, we're going to move to the next project. I'd like to um, bring about uh, this is actually one. R really, uh, really oh, like this project. Oh, oh, okay, so somebody's got noise over there. Uh, careful with the sound. Um, I'd like to call in a project author for dark waste. And this is Enrique Resendiz of Buena High School of yes, Teacher. Oh, wow. I'll okay, we have somebody muted, somebody talking to their pet, I think. Let me see. Somebody, I gotta, I gotta mute somebody. Okay, so uh, Enrique Resendiz, are you available? I think so, but my video isn't working. Oh, okay. Well, can you talk to us? Uh, I think I can fix the, the video first. Okay, yeah. so we're going to describe your project in the meantime, okay? Okay, go ahead. Do you want to explain them? All right, so... I think it's a voice, uh, voice thing. All right, Enrique's proposal uh, is to re replace disposable paper trays at the school that are not reusable with reusable plastic trays. And he actually calculates that this would make a huge difference because uh, about 1,890 paper plates are used every day at the school, and those actually end up in the landfill. So um, if his proposal was implemented, they would actually be saving about $30,000 a year. And the investment, even though seems big, it's a one-time investment of only $6,600. So it would be paid off pretty quickly. And he also explains that it could reduce packaging of other items that are usually wrapped uh, during lunch. So uh, he hopes that any other expenses related to this will uh, be outweighed by the uh, huge benefits and the savings to the school. So, do we have you, Enrique Resendiz? Uh, can you hear me just fine? Yes. Okay. We hear you. What was your, the most challenging part of doing your project? What was your favorite thing of doing the project and why you think it should be implemented? I think the most difficult part would be the, well, everything had the same amount of difficulty. I really wouldn't find anything different about it. Um, the most fun was def def definitely the fun fact. I found that uh, quite amusing. 
it, it was just fun calculating the uh, the f- the football fields, if you if you say so. Oh yeah, that was an interesting fact. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's quite long. It's from Boina to LA. It's quite long. Yes. So is that you and the f- camera we're w- looking at, or and who's speaking? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's Enrique. Wow, you sound older than you look. Right. <laughs> you got have that a old. deep voice, naturally. <laughs> Okay, well, great job, and I love his project. You felt very passionate about your project. I could tell in your writing. You're an excellent writer, really good. Thank you. Thank you, you, uh, Enrique. And now we're going to move to the next project, and this is the prize. And this is third prize winner for waste reduction category, uh, a project called Disrespectful Dispensers. Another project we loved. No. No. Did I make a mistake? We actually have oh yeah, we sk- I skipped one. Yes, yes. Do you want to present it? Yeah. So we actually have a fourth um, prize for this category because, as Rocio mentioned, we have so many projects. And for this uh, fourth prize, we have a project called Air Hand Dryers, and Amelia Golden and Jorge Estrada. Uh, and their teacher is Erin Mendes, and they propose to decrease waste in the bathrooms in Anacapa Middle School by 90% by eliminating paper towels and replacing them with air hand dryers. And uh, they calculated that this is a very cost-effective option that, uh, that, that will not only save money for the school, it will also save time for the custodians who uh, they talk to and mention how the bathrooms are constantly dirty, filled with paper towels, uh, but they also result uh, in savings uh, in, in costs. So 95% they calculated uh, in, and they did some research that showed that it could save 95% of the cost um, in comparison to paper towels, but it would also produce 50 to 70% less carbon dioxide. Um, so air hand dryers they found uh, in their research that would decrease um, carbon dioxide 50 to 70 percent less in comparison to uh, paper towels and they will communicate the project to their school to gain support and hopefully implement it uh, next year So, um, Amelia and Jorge, oh yes, can you tell us, and I loved your art, your art, an am- amazing artist, can you tell us a little bit, or would you, we have a video, do you want to speak, or do you want us to show your video? Is this it? Oh no, there's not, it's a different one, sorry, 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 there's a confusion. <laughs> Our dryers, oh, is this, hair dryers, right. So they do have a short video. Yeah, okay, we're gonna need you to speak to tell us what was your more challenging part and more um, fun part of your project. Um, and we'd love to see the pictures you have in your, in your room in the back. Please show, show, show. Enrique, do you wanna take out the music? There you go. Hi, Amelia. Hi. So um, you did all the art yourself in the video we saw, the, the cartoon you know, was, was um, it you who made that? Yes, I did the art. Um, Jorge did a little bit in the middle, but I did most of it. I did the one that looks not good. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Okay, so what was the most challenging part of doing your project? Um, the most challenging part about doing our project was having to um, communicate to each other over emails yeah. and Zoom calls instead of personally talking to each other. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. 
How about the, your favorite part? Um, we agreed that our favorite part was working with each other because we both um, improved our team working skills and it was overall a good experience. Nice. And uh, do you think this project definitely should be implemented in your school campus? Yes, our project um, should definitely be um, implemented uh, into our school because it will save a lot of waste and um, like we said in our slides, it will reduce the carbon footprint by 50 to 70 percent and um, the custodians would also have a lot less work to do um, and like picking up the paper towels from the ground and off the ceiling and um, sometimes uh, finding them in sinks and toilets also causing clogs. How about Enrique? Would you like to say anything, Enrique? Would you like to add something? Some words? Jorge. Jorge. Yeah, I can, yeah, I exist, yeah. Sorry. Um, no. I guess, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. Congratulations. So, next team, now it is third prize winners. Waste reduction category is disrespectful dispensers. Authors are Elena Peacock, Juan Nugan of Anacapa Middle School and Mrs. Mendes students. And they will receive an award of $250. And the project is about... All right, so the team disrespectful dispensers, that one, I can't believe I was able to say it because it's <laughs> tongue twister. Um, well, they had a really great idea, very simple and easy to implement idea to reduce uh, waste going into the landfill at Anacapa. Uh, they noticed that all the sporks that are used for, um, for lunch come wrapped in a paper bag, in a plastic bag. And they think this is unnecessary. And so they propose to have dispensers for the sporks and for napkins and not have uh, all the sporks wrapped in plastic bags. They would eliminate about 90 pounds of plastic every year that is currently going into the landfill. And not only going into the landfill, but they also point out that it, uh, they fly around with the wind, they're left behind uh, in the quad and other outdoor areas, and they can be consumed by wildlife as well as be, um, they can be carried out to the ocean. They're preparing posters and they're going to use the school mascot, Gerald the Seagull, to educate other students. So here are some of the, the slides, and they actually um, use the mascot, Gerald, that I think they designed mm -hmm. themselves. They actually draw yeah. it. And these are the dispensers that they are proposing to use. And very economical, easy to do project, um, totally feasible and necessary. So do we have um, here, uh, Quan or? Um, I'm here, also here. Okay, do you want to turn on your cameras? My camera is on. I can't turn on my camera. Okay. Let's I don't see. have one. Oh, there you go. We have you now. Good. So, Juan, tell us what was the most challenging part of designing this project? What was the most interesting or fun and why you think it should be implemented? Give me a moment. Let me find my notes, please. <laughs> Where is your uh, colleague, your team member? Is... Hi. Elena, how about you? Are you ready? You want to say? All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Do you want to tell us something? What was more difficult, more fun, and what's most important? 
My favorite part about the ECOA project is that I get the chance to reduce the amount of plastic waste in the world and also look at the adorable pictures of Gerald, our mascot, that my friend Elena drew for us. Elena, your turn. The hardest part of the project for us was editing the raw info to be way more enjoyable than it was. Number three, the to reduce. Ah, yeah. <laughs> what was the question again? Well, the third question is why should it be implemented? Why you think it's important oh, yeah. to implement? It? Thank you. I think it's very important to implement this to reduce the amount of plastic waste in the world that could harm animals and even us so that animals like our mascot, Gerald the seagull, can't it accidentally ingest it and get hurt. Yep. That's a good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Congratulations, guys. Fantastic team and fantastic work. And, oh, and one uh, more thing. Is okay. it possible to use the prize money to like fund other projects instead of like receiving it? Oh yes, absolutely. And we've had that in a, in a school a couple of years ago, some students donated their cash money to their school to implement a um, composting project. So yes, that's very honorable and kind of you. Yeah, so I'd like to do that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Adorable. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move now to prize, second prize winners in this tier of uh, waste reduction. And this is a project titled Corona Crew Vermicomposting. Corona Crew Vermicomposting. Oh, what a title. I'm going to start with the title, right? The author is Natalie. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Natalie. Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, Sherry, who has won a cash prize of two hundred dollars, okay, and uh, she's a student at um, Buena. Buena? No, uh, Anacapa. This is Anacapa, right? I have the wrong text. It's Anacapa Middle School. A student of Mrs. Uh, Aaron Mendes, and my partner is going to explain us the project. All right, so um, Natalie proposes to install a system for vermicomposting, so warm composting at Anacapa. And uh, she calculated that they could reduce at least 50% of the food scraps that is currently going into the landfill. Um, they calculated that using um, the audit data uh, that we can see here on the screen. And, and so she calculated that this could decrease the amount, so the pounds of uh, food waste by 70,000 pounds a year. And she explains that the compost could also be used for plants around campus and that she really hopes that it can be used on uh, vegetables and she really hopes that they can grow vegetables that can save money for uh, lunch so that they can use the produce during lunch at school as well. And she plans to educate the cafeteria staff, the principal, and the students, of course, uh, through meetings, signs, and the Anacapa Weekly uh, to get support for her project and get everybody on board. And I think I made a mistake. Your cash price is $350, not to say $200, by the way. Uh, another mistake I, in, my, in my notes. Congratulations, Natalie. I would love to hear from you and everybody else. What was your most challenging part of the project of designing a project during COVID-19? What was your favorite part of doing it and why you think it's important and should be implemented? Okay, um, my favorite part about doing this project was just being able to find a solution for a problem at school. Um, because most of the time the staff or the district don't come to students for their input on what should be changed or fixed on campus. So it was very encouraging to be able to give and share my opinion and perspective on that. Um, the most challenging and difficult part of the project for me was just getting started. I mean, not only was it overwhelming when the teacher handed out a large packet full of information, but also having to decide on an issue to do because there are so many environmental um, issues that are important to me. So I ended up picking food waste because I felt that it was the largest issue Anna Kappa had. Um, I think my project should be implemented because it can show people that even a little bit 
of hope and help from something small like this can do much more than you think. It can inspire and show you that you don't need to accomplish something enormous and life-changing to help the world. <laughs> You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Can I hug you for <laughs> <laughs> I can, uh, Wow. Oh. Jeez. Beautiful. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go <laughs> First price. <laughs> muted. Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. Oh, I'm glad I was muted because I got very <laughs> sentimental. <laughs> okay. So our next prize winner and is the ta -da 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 -da, number one prize winner for waste reduction tier is project title composting in campus of Winnie Ashley Charlie. Herer, Mackenzie Peters, Chloe Sedehi, students of Jonathan Middle School, Missy Chavez, and it's a project that it's been implemented also. Like, it's on. It's, it's on. And uh, congratulations. Uh, it was, it, there were really tight prizes, and this, it, it was a tough tie. And, and uh, thank you for following us in media and sending your bloomers all of those things matter to all of you thank you um your work um means a lot to the whole world um and the more we get to know the people what you're doing and your ideas the more um we're helping to change behaviors of adults which are the hardest to change okay so now with this uh, who would like to talk to us from from this team hi i'm chloe and i would say the most challenging part of our project was actually collecting the food waste some students just would ignore our food waste bins or instead use normal trash cans which ironically would actually waste the food waste and take away from the kids who buy lunch at our school because we we're going to use the food waste to go into our garden to then help the school lunches uh, there are also times that students put food in the composting bins that could be composted, despite the signs we put up. But overall, our project was really rewarding. Great. Anyone else from your team? I'm Mackenzie. And what we liked most about our project was getting to teach and inform students at our school about composting. Many of these students had heard of composting before, but didn't know how it worked or why it was important. It was neat for us to be able to teach the students about our project and why we were doing it. We also liked knowing that we were doing something to help the earth and that we were doing our part in making a difference. And I think it's important that our project becomes a reality because food waste is a really serious problem all around the world, but we also found that it was a big issue at Haneda. And so even though we can't stop all food waste with our composting, it was really important for us to do what we could. And that's why I believe it's important that our project became a reality. So girls, tell me, what was the secret to have your school administrators want to do it? There's something that maybe other students can learn and other teachers and us as well. I mean, we didn't spend, we didn't have to spend any money on our project because we were able to um, use a composting bin that we had provided from our science teacher in our science classroom and we got a local business farm supply to donate the worms. So I think our school was happy that we didn't have to spend any money on doing this. Great. So for that, I don't know if you've seen uh, uh, your, uh, we have a prize for you, $500, that we'll be sending distributed in equal parts for your team members. And uh, we wanna congratulate you and your teacher and your uh, school administration as well for allowing you to make this project a reality and for all your effort. Thank you very much. And everybody else as well. Okay, so we're moving now for, the, um, for another tier. We're moving now to tier number four and that is ocean acidification outreach. The oceans are becoming more acidic, the pH. Uh, it's decreasing as more of the 
anthropogenic or human produced carbon dioxide goes into the ocean. This year is about educating a community, um, a target community, an audience on how um, oceanification can be prevented. And it's that's by reducing mainly carbon dioxide. And they have to, this team had to go through a survey of audience, a target audience, and basically implement the project as well. So the winners of these are from Channel Islands High School. And um, they're students from um, Mrs. Teresa Lujan. And I'm going to read their names here. It's uh, Jonathan Juarez, Brandon Saavedra, Roxanne Salazar, Jacqueline Lopez, and Sasiel Roque. Congratulations, you're the winners, first prize winners, $500 for the Tier Ocean Acidification Outreach. And Channel Islands High School is in Oxnard. It was love. Uh, first, we're going to see a few of your slides and show the public and audience what your project was about. And that was, uh, I can tell it's a lot of teamwork and this is very difficult, normal situations, but with this social distancing, it's enormously, exponentially more difficult. And I, we all appreciate your work in doing this and the leadership of your teacher, Teresa, uh, Mrs. Lujan, and doing this. So thank you for all your work. We're gonna show your slides and then we'll love to hear from you guys. All right, so this team, uh, developed a, an ocean acidification uh, outreach campaign and they actually imp I'm really impressed they did this during the uh, the quarantine they were already during shelter in place and they were able to survey 80 people their objective was to actually increase the knowledge and awareness of, also, of ocean acidification of their um, audience by 50% and uh, they did a pre-survey and then they did four weeks of an online online campaign through social media and uh, uh, slides and things like that and uh, they reached their audience and then they did a post, post survey and they compared the pre and post to evaluate um, if they were successful at increasing their um, their community's knowledge of uh, ocean acidification. And uh, they were successful, uh, but they increased knowledge consistently. And um, they actually increased overall knowledge of ocean acidification by 59%. And they also increased um, how much their audience cared about the issue and their just general knowledge about what causes it, carbon dioxide. So they were um, very successful at reaching their audience even through the difficult times and um, they were also successful at, um, at achieving their goal. All right, so. Students from Channel Islands High School, would you like to speak to us? Jonathan? Brandon? Hello, um, my name's Jonathan. I would just like to thank my teacher for helping us out with this project. Um, the most difficult part for this project was to do the project after coronavirus because we started working on it during coronavirus not when school started because we originally had a different project in mind but we decided to do ocean acidification because we thought this one really affected us and our school and this project really made us think about the bigger picture and not just ourselves it only takes a little bit of your time to recycle or to like um compost and stuff to save our oceans and there's like more to think about um but at the end if you only make one change a day then you can change the world <laughs> Good for you. Anyone else from your team? Do you have any Brandon or Roxanne? Um, I just want to say thank you for letting us do this for us because this is really an enjoyable experience for us. That's basically all I wanted to say. 
Who did the slideshows? They're beautiful. Um, it was so it was it was more um our Johnny, but we also all tried to help in the kitchen. So. Very nice. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I, we're glad we did it. And I hope you continue with your Instagram campaign that you did. So keep going the good work, okay? Thank and you. So, okay. So with that, that was the last of our projects. Cliff, if you're still there, uh, we want to say thank you, everybody. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, supporters. Thank you, partners, teachers, parents for supporting your children, your students, and especially thank you students for doing, you could have just spent a lot of more time. Uh, many students are lost in video games and, and just, or, or social media, instead of investing the time in being creative with finding solutions and caring for the environment. And I want to say something else, go outside, spend time outside as much as you can. Doesn't mean with a bunch of people, just by yourselves mm -hmm. perhaps for now, but as much as you can, uh, um, go outside now that the summer is out. And uh, Cliff, do you have some words or anybody has any questions? Yes, I do. Uh, but a question, could you update us on the status of the YouTube video? Uh, we, will, it be, will it be available for people yes, to will look be, at? Oh, yes, yes. This has, been, this has been recording. We've recorded the whole session and we're going to upload it to YouTube and we're going to send to links to the teachers and everybody who participated today in the registration. We have contacts now for everybody. So we'll be sending it out and making uh, our posts in social media as well mm -hmm. available. So it will be in our, our YouTube channel as a recorded, not live, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, we did test, but we didn't test with so many people logging into YouTube. We didn't know we had a limit. So I apologize for that. Really sorry. Okay, so with this, we conclude the virtual ECOA Challenge 2020 awards event. And we wanna thank all of you for acknowledging and celebrating the work and the innovation of these students and the work of their teachers. So please consider supporting our work by donating at meritofoundation.org slash donate so that we can continue providing environmental science and entrepreneurship experiences to thousands of students in this region and, by, and beyond in the coming future. Thank you. Rocia, Mari Paula, fantastic job. And students and teachers, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you for joining us. This webinar, yep. Zoom meeting, Echo Challenge 2020. We did it. Thank you. Yay. <laughs>